scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Are you ready? You want to preserve the move of God in South Africa? There must be an open display of the power of God within your land an open display of the miracle walking power of God. Miracle signs and wonders. Do not tell people to come to a God whose power they cannot see. That's right, that's right. By the time the newspapers in South Africa are full of the wonder walking power of God, that the headline on the newspaper is that a popular madman who is known everywhere in South Africa has now become a pastor. That is too notable to ignore. That's right. By the time five dead people medically confirmed come back to life. By the time someone who is obviously oppressed or whose family is down, maybe in parliament, one of the kings within the territory receives the power of God. Their endorsements will preserve the purposes of God. Can I tell you this? If people do not see the power of God, they will soon forget about God. That's right. The power of God reminds people that he's alive. Please hear what I'm telling you. This is very important. I'm just listing them. I apologize. We may not talk so much about scriptures. Miracles create convictions in the hearts of those who witness it and those who benefit from it. It lets people know that he's still seated on the throne. We live in a world right now where there are many alternatives. There are about 4,000 registered religions. Are you aware of that? And counting. So when you say God, people say, what are you talking about? God means anyone and anything I respect. Ah, but he says this is eternal life. John chapter 17 and verse 3. That they may know you, the one true God and Jesus your son. John 4 and verse 48. Except they see signs and wonders, he says they will not believe. Right. John 4 48 except they see they want to see the power of god to save they want to see the power of god to heal to deliver they want to see the power of god to bless the power of god to transform remember what happened to the jailer remember that story yes, sir. is that true paul and silas That's right. the bible says at midnight they began to pray and to sing and everybody in the prison had them. Suddenly, His Majesty just came, not an angel. He came himself. There was such an earthquake, the chains broke, and the Bible says, all doors open. How many doors? When he comes, there is not one door that remains. All apakatos ketebakata. They prayed. And they sang in prison, bound with chains. And when his majesty stepped in, with an earthquake, all doors opened. And the jailer thought that they had run. And he took a sword wanting to kill himself. 
And Peter said, find your peace. And Paul, find peace. We are here. We are safe. There's no need to rush. God who did it can do it again. We are going to go out honorably. And the man said, no, I've not seen it this way. What do I need to do? And he says, now you are talking. Can I tell you this? South Africa, your territory needs to see a consistent display. Not once a year. A consistent display. Not just a display of power in church alone. They need to see the power of God. By the time a man of God declares that there will be a bumper harvest and strangely the agricultural sector in South Africa receives a boost that is inexplainable by the agriculturists, the economies. They say, We've not seen it in this fashion. Then they know there is a God in heaven. An open display of the supernatural power of God. Don't tell people to stop going to herbalists and native doctors if you cannot give them a superior alternative. Can I be honest with you? People will continue to run to the devil until the day we present an alternative that is consistent, superior, and result producing. The desperation of human needs will not allow them to forbear with nonsense. Once they go through pain beyond the threshold, they will source for alternatives and unashamedly bow to those alternatives. To see you high and lifted up, you are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you high and lifted up over South Africa, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy ho. One more time, South Africa. We'll see him high and lifted up. He is shining in the light of his glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. This is why men and women of God must trust God for superior levels of end time anointings. The mantles that men like Smith Wigglesworth prophesied upon before they died. They said even what we have done, there is coming a generation that will do more. The general said it before they died. But I know that after this conference, because this conference is a trigger, suddenly you will begin to hear of men and women across South Africa, men of character and men of fire. You will begin to hear about the manifestations of the power of God in church services that will dumbfound principalities and powers. You will hear that fire wanted to consume a house, but nothing was burnt. Ah. When they say we don't believe this, refer them to the burning bush. That it is possible for a bush to be burnt yet not consumed. That a day will come when wild worship is going on in church. Someone who has been missing for 10 years, 15 years. The power of God will leave that altar. And the fire like a tornado will go and fish that person back. Days will come when a church is empty, no conference. And you will see sinners running to the gate. And they will hold on to the gate and say, create a fresh service for us. We are coming to Jesus. Times will come where business people will finish their meeting and while they are in their meeting about to round up, the power of the Holy Ghost will fall upon that meeting and you are watching senior executives under the anointing 
praying in the spirit I don't know the name of what is happening to me but I know that it's a new season you will see people in marketplaces receiving an outpouring students sitting in an exam hall and when they are done writing their exams fire falls upon them someone shall send the fire someone shall send the fire shall send the fire Please sit down. We're almost there. Preserving the move of God. Can I tell you this? Have you noticed that from scripture, every time there was a display of the power of God, it was captured and preserved in a name. And they will be told, when your children ask you, what does this mean? Tell them, once upon a time, how do you think they got Shama and Rafa and Sikenu? They were all dimensions of his power that were captured in his name. Can I tell you this? The assignment of every generation is that you should not leave to your grave until you give the coming generation a new name that your experience has captured about God. South Africa, the generations coming, all of you who are from 50 and above, what name have you captured in your lifetime that will be given the children? Capture the names in songs that don't die. Capture the names in books that don't die. Capture the name in sermons that don't die. The God of Abraham is also God, but he does not walk the same as the God of Isaac. There is a dimension of the God of Abraham that is not seen in the God of Isaac. And when Jacob came, he said, I need to give God a name too. He wrestled with him and said, I will not let you go. Leave me for the day break it. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. He said, what is your name? Jacob. Thou shall no longer be called Jacob. For as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. He touched the whole of his thigh and he blessed him. The Bible says the sun arose and he called the name of the place Peniel. I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. By the time we get to Psalm 24, he says, This is the generation of them that seek thee, O God of Jacob. That a day will come, you will see the faithfulness of God. And one day you will teach your children and say, every time you are in trouble and it looks like the battles are raging. There was a song I sang in 1981 before you came. That is a song of victory that is like a code in this family. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Do you know that was a song that was a code of victory? Every time the nation of Israel were surrounded by their enemies and defeat was imminent, they raised that song. You are good and your mercy endures and God is saying, who is calling my dimension as a warrior? Clear the way for me. Please let's hurry up. <laughs> Number four, are you ready? The fourth way you preserve the move of God across a territory, across South Africa. Are you ready? Intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. Intentional and methodical mentorship of younger believers. Now you see what your pastor did with Pastor Colin here. Intentional mentorship of younger believers. Younger believers there don't just mean younger pastors, younger businessmen, younger politicians. Fathers across different fields, fathers across different industries, fathers in ministry. Don't just collect seed from your sons, mentor them. Don't just do impartation for them, teach them the road to the anointing, teach them the road to power. 
2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. Very quickly. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. We're wrapping up. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2. And the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. Read with me. The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Can I tell you this? When Smith Wigglesworth, listen carefully. When Smith Wigglesworth was preparing to join the cloud of witnesses, he told Lester Sumro, he said, when you are old, do not die with this mantle. Find young men. Train them. Impart upon them. Today, we are privileged recipients of that baton because the fathers allowed to train us. Many of you have heard of my encounter with Dr. Miles Munro, a greatly revered mentor in life and in death. I honor him even in the grave. Do you know when God began to show me that I was called into ministry, I wrote many men of God, then there were no phones. And Dr. Miles Munro was the only man of God who replied me back and written. He said, I believe in you. I believe in this and that. And I read his books. And God guided me. I remember... I was at the southern part of Nigeria preaching in a conference that morning. Literally, I began to feel a sharp pain across my chest. I said, what is going on? And by 5 a.m. Nigerian time, I was told that my greatly revered mentor had gone. But I said, no, even though he's dead, he still speaks. We are the continuation of his impact. Fathers, immortalize your impact by raising sons. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't just raise people who call you father. Raise people who replicate your values. Can I tell you this? Please, fathers in business, in ministry, don't allow these young people to stand up and just do what they want to do. Right. You are a father, discipline them in love. Teach them. Love their future more than your reputation. They may not understand. Chastise them in righteousness. Not out of a wicked heart. Let them learn the law of process. Minimize premature manifestation. Let them stay until something called due season. The casualties we have in the body of Christ today is because of some of these premature manifestations. You're a young man here in ministry. Listen to me. Just because you can heal the sick, you can prophesy, does not mean you are ready for ministry. Can I tell you, what you call pulpit ministry is only 30% of what ministry really is. There is a skill to stand in here. It's a very slippery path. If you, do, if you are not trained to stand, you can fall. South Africa, respect your fathers. Not because they are perfect, but because they are sincere. When the devil wants to destroy a territory, he kills the fathers. And woe betides a nation that does not have political fathers. You do not have political fathers. The younger ones will become a worse expression of the fathers. You don't have fathers in ministry. South Africa, you know that the church in this nation is going through sharp transitions. Can I tell you, pray that God will raise fathers indeed. <laughs> Businessmen, don't just die with billions and have children argue and have people argue over your money. Transfer your values to younger people. Professors, don't be the only professor you know. Raise people. Raise people. Raise people. Can I challenge you? If you are a professional in any area here, 
you have failed if within 10 years of your moment of exploit you cannot show at least two people who are becoming like you 10 years from the time of your exploits if you cannot produce at least two people even if they have not arrived let's see how far they have come can I be honest with you if you are the only one who is the champion doing what you are doing the day the devil strikes you there will be nobody to support you this is why nations lose their treasures with the death of just one person you can cheat death when you transfer yourself to many people I pray you are learning something here number five how do we preserve the the purposes of God and the move of God in South Africa are you ready for the fifth point embrace influence embrace influence don't run away from influence there are two ways principally that the kingdom of God advances number one is called evangelism number two is called influence evangelism establishes the purposes of God in the hearts of men influence establishes the purposes of God across a territory if you have evangelism without influence you will have people who are saved but they will remain beggarly as far as the territory is concerned you need influence let me define influence here is my definition of influence influence is the ability to compel men to buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty the ability the fortitude to compel men to buy into your ideologies your value systems without using force or cruelty if I can make you love God the way I love him if I can make you pray the way I pray if I can make you love a decent life the way I love without using force or cruelty I have influenced you can I be honest with you be careful who influences you you will always become like the influence that's right, that's right. this is the reason why we must pray that God himself will raise kingdom-minded born-again tongue-talking people in politics in business in government it is my prayer I'm not the kind of man of God I made a covenant with God that I will never raise a people who are only spiritually on fire in order of priority their spiritual lives are my primary focus however they must be people of influence I believe in influence if you do not have the people of God represented in your parliament, your businesses, one day there will rise a Pharaoh who did not know Joseph. And your work of 30 years will end under the ungodliness of one man. I believe in influence. There must be someone in the security sector who can be a representation of the purposes of God there. There must be someone in your justice system who loves Jesus sincerely. I'm not talking of religiosity and I'm not just talking of favoring Christians. I'm talking of bringing forth the value system of the kingdom such that everyone benefits both Christians and non-Christians. The value system of the kingdom does not benefit Christians alone. It benefits all of God's creation. This is what I'm teaching. Your universities and your higher institutions of learning must have professionals who also bow to the Lordship of Christ. So that in addition to secular enlightenment, they bring people to a life of decorum and power and spirituality. Are we learning? South Africa and South African churches standing on this platform, I beseech you men of God by the message of God teach your people the principles of influence greatness is important listen to me the body of Jesus is hanging on the cross there and Jesus Christ died on the cross but he was not supposed to remain on the cross yet nobody had the influence to bring that body down 
no prayer warrior could bring that body down it took a man of influence called joseph of arimathea he used his influence with government to say bring that body down i have a virgin tomb if he did not donate his tomb through influence you will not be able to say oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory influence played a role in our salvation believe in prosperity believe in increase believe in greatness for as long as the church is surrounded by men and women of influence who have kingdom at heart there is only so much the devil can do influence don't just teach people to fast alone as much as i've said it don't just teach people to pray alone teach people to translate the values of the god life into a context of honor and dignity that the world can see that you have utilized kingdom tools the weapons of victory to produce a destiny that is enviable when god granted me the anointing and the grace to raise and to mentor and to build kings and nobles i said thank you for this grace why because for every king to function in a land there must be a priestly and a prophetic cover the formation of king priest and prophet is an old ordinance that will not change woe betides a professional or a king who stands alone in politics and government and does not have the prophetic and the priesthood to protect come them on, come on. Yes, sir. number six are you ready how do you preserve the move of god in south africa the sixth and the final key there must be an open display of love an open display of love without prejudices without religious biases without cultural biases there has to be an open display of love can i be honest with you until there is love there is a dimension of evangelism called evangelism through love where it is the love that is the preacher and my goodness love preaches well it is love does not need an interpreter you preach love everybody will hear and understand church of the lord jesus christ if you cannot show your people love if a preacher cannot show people love if a government can't show people love if your systems and your structures cannot show people love then i assure you sooner or later the reality of the faith life will fade away the advantage we have in the faith life is that christianity is the greatest faith practice i know that is the most vocal advocate of love That's right. That's right. by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you heal the sick not when you raise the dead not when you pray in tongues not when you prophesy he says though i speak with tongues of men and of angels and i have not love i am nothing even if i offer my body to be burnt and i have not love i am nothing though i know all mysteries i have all prophecies and i have not love i am nothing he says love is patient love is kind love is humble it endures all things it hopes all things love there remained these three faith hope and love but the greatest is love in first corinthians chapter 12 as i round up after teaching us on the gifts of the spirit prophecy miracles he said behold i show you a more excellent way there is a more excellent way of preaching preaching by love there is a more excellent way of prophesying prophesying in love there is a more excellent way of governance governance in love there is a more excellent way of learning learning in love love never fails please repeat this after me love never fails one more time love that means if you find anything failing add love to it and it stops failing immediately if a nation is failing add love to it 
The Bible says, love never fails. You find a preacher that is failing hard love. Love never fails. Business people, that's a strategy. You want to know what is fail proof. And the Bible already tells you that love never fails. So when you invest in love, ah, next time you are listing your investments, don't just list telecom, real estate. Add love. And it will only take an unwise person to laugh at you. What are your investments? I have investment in real estate. I have an investment in oil and gas. I have investment in this. I have investment in love. Me, really? Yes, sir. Because no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it come into the heart of any man that which God has in store, not for prayer warriors, not for fasting giants, not for effective preachers, them that love him. He says, how can you say you love God that you have not seen when you dislike your neighbor who you have seen? South Africa, this is my final word for you in this season. Africa, divided we fall, but united we stand. All hands together. Please stand up. If you can hold hands with someone, please do. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease. When we are your instrument of peace. And with our hands lifted up, we will worship our King. And with our hands lifted up, we come before you rejoicing with our hands lifted up to the sky and the world wonders why we'll just tell them we love in our king oh we just tell them we love in our king i did this at the beginning of the conference please lend me one minute even if it's just the first part of your anthem, Colin, can you do that for me in one minute? I'd like to end my session honoring your nation, South Africa, by singing once again the anthem of your nation. Please. Go see Africa. Malu paganisu pondo loyo Yeshua imitanda zo yetu go si si gelela ti. Apoloyo Morena Buluka Si Chava Saesu Ufedi Sedintua Lima Tsuenyeho Usi Buluke Chabasa, 
South Africa, South Africa, a diplom fan on say bless you in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that every blessing that was allotted for this conference I stand in faith with the angel over this house Apostle Felix Oko on behalf of the church in South Africa I declare be blessed amen. be blessed amen I bless members of parliament. Yes, sir. Those in governance. I bless the business people in South Africa. Amen. I bless the young people, the students. Amen. I bless the professionals in South Africa. Amen. I bless every man and every woman of God in South Africa. Amen. I bless every citizen of this land. Amen. I decree and declare over your life go from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. South Africa and Africa I pray that next year by this time Come on. you would be a thousand times greater Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. Apostle Felix thank you so much thank your wonderful wife house of treasures South Africa hello Africa I scriptures exalt us you. from you. the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart oh, from thy eyes is that and how keep you them in the, the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to read the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words Apostle, in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like this for us. Truly loves Thank you. We truly love you. We love you. We love you, sir. And I want to make a plea. I know you are busy. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> I, I take advantage of opportunities. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to make a plea that by this time next year, We'll be back here. Demo! Yes! 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 I am praying that by this time next year, I would have enlarged this auditorium from yes, 3,000 yes, to sir. at least five or 6,000. Yes, sir. And 
Possibly a day will come when we will move this meeting to stadium. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Apostle, as a friend, as a brother, as someone that believes in the mighty grace of God upon your life, I want to say thank you. Thank you. I truly, truly love this man. I love him with my being, I tell you. Amen. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you for leaving everything behind. I mean, listen to me. You may not know. I, I, let me say this. Before pastors that are watching, him and I are close to the extent where certain informations are privy to me now. When Apostle arrived, he opened his phone. And he says, you know, pastors are angry that I don't return calls, I don't return messages. Just when he took off to when he landed, there were 300, 206 messages that he needs to respond to. I mean, he's a human being. He still needs to prepare for preaching. He still needs to spend time with God. He's extremely busy. And in the midst of that, he made us a priority. Amen. Amen. Apostle, there is no... There is no amount of offering or whatever that we will give you that will equate to what has been done here. We are just saying as a people of this nation that we are truly grateful. And we love you, sir. Celebrate Apostle Joshua Selman. Hallelujah. Celebrate him. Glory to God. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Baska Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and Nakata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.